Good morning to everyone. I am very happy today to be with you for our online worship service. Before I begin my sermon, let us bow down in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you that we are here gathered together as a family. Thank you so much that we have ways in order to worship you despite the global pandemic that we are experiencing. We ask, Father, that you will be with us as we study your word. Thank you so much for keeping us alive. Thank you so much for your word, O God. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, we say, Amen. The title of our sermon for today is, Why Tread the Difficult Road? Our text is from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. The title of the text in the Bible is On the Road to Emmaus. It was Easter Sunday and two disciples of Jesus were walking on the road to Emmaus. Emmaus is around 11 kilometers from the city of Jerusalem. While they were walking, they were discussing the things that happened in Jerusalem for the past days particularly the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. Jesus drew near to the two disciples, but they were kept from recognizing Jesus. And Jesus joined the conversation. He asked, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? The two disciples stopped and they were looking sad. Cleopas, one of the disciples, asked, Jesus, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Jesus asked, what things? About Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet who is mighty in word and deed before God and all the people. He was delivered up and condemned to death by the chief priests and our rulers. And then he was crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And besides, it is already the third day, and some women in our company went to his tomb this morning. And according to them, they saw a vision of angels who told them that Jesus was alive. And so, some of our companions also went to the tomb. And... They did not find Jesus inside. In Luke 24, verses 25 to 26, Jesus said, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to the two disciples in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When they were near Emmaus, Jesus acted as if he was moving further, but the two disciples asked him to stay with them. And at the dinner table, Jesus Christ took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the two disciples. It is at this point that the two disciples were able to recognize Jesus, and then he suddenly vanished. And the two disciples said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Luke 24, verse 32. The two disciples rose that same hour and they returned to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, they found the 11 disciples and the 11 disciples told them, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. In turn, the two disciples told the 11 what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how they were able to know Jesus through the breaking of the bread. There are three action words that I want you to remember as points in this sermon today. The number one word is tread. What is the 
meaning of tread. Tread means to walk on. I want us to remember that Jesus walks with us in our difficult roads. In this story, the two disciples were deeply immersed in current events. They were discussing the things that had happened in Jerusalem during the past days. They were in despair because of the death of Jesus. Their hope, Jesus Christ, was condemned to death and crucified. And the disciples saw Jesus hanging on the cross. They saw the blood, they saw the gore, and they saw the Roman soldiers punishing Jesus. When Jesus was alive, the two disciples thought that Jesus was the one who could redeem Israel. But how could the dead Jesus redeem Israel? Besides, the women in their company claimed that the body of Jesus was not inside the tomb and alleged that he was alive. The two disciples were confused. They are uncertain about the future. And maybe they even thought that even their very lives were in danger. They felt defeated and they have decided to just go home to their village, which is Emmaus. What is the relevance of this scripture for us today? We ask ourselves, why do we have to travel difficult roads? Pwede ni mang wag na, shortcut na lang, detour na lang, or pwede namang lampasan na lang lahat to. We experience sadness, fear, and anxiety. For instance, why do we have to experience this global pandemic? What will happen to the world if the vaccine for SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 would not come soon? What will happen to the economy? Are we going to be sick of COVID-19? Are we going to recover if we get sick? Everything is uncertain and we are downcast. It is during these moments that Jesus Christ meets us on the road. This is a time or an opportunity to be able to walk longer with Jesus. When we say longer, we do not refer just to the physical distance that we have to cover. When we say longer, we refer to the spiritual, emotional, and psychological burden that days feel like months and that months feel like years. We have to remember that Jesus walks with us whether or not we are aware of his presence. The moment when we are depressed and defeated is the very moment that we begin to take the road with Jesus. As Father Richard Rohr beautifully puts it, the soul must walk through suffering to go higher, further, deeper, or longer. The saints variously called such suffering deaths, nights, darkness, unknowing, spiritual trials, or just doubt itself. When we go to 1 Peter 1, verses 6 to 7, we read, In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that burdens our heart today, it may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The second action word that I want us to remember is tell. In the story, Jesus tells us about himself on the basis of the scripture. We could recall that Jesus kept on walking with the two disciples. They walked for 11 kilometers from the city of Jerusalem 
to the village of Emmaus. And during that whole time, Jesus Christ was revealing himself to the two disciples through the scriptures. The two disciples initially had their own expectations on how Jesus would redeem Israel. However, if we look in Luke 24 verse 46, we read, Thus, it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. We realize that the redemption offered by Jesus is really the salvation of our souls. In Psalm 116 verse 8, we read, For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from fears, my feet from stumbling. The third action word that we have to remember is take. Jesus takes us into communion with him. In the story, Jesus broke the bread, blessed it, and gave it to the two disciples. At this very moment, the disciples were able to recognize Jesus. When we take Jesus' blood and body, we commune with him. Jesus is within us through the Holy Spirit, and communion is an intimate fellowship with Jesus. It is the genuine recognition of who Jesus is in our lives. Again, Father Richard Rohr correctly puts it, that the journey to the wellsprings of hope is really a journey toward the center, toward the innermost ground of our being, where we meet and are met by God. In summary, why do we have to tread the difficult road? Number one, Jesus treads the difficult road with us. Number two, Jesus tells us about himself in our difficult road. Number three, Jesus takes us into communion with him as we travel our difficult road. What is the purpose of sufferings and difficulties in our lives? It is basically to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Our last verse for today is Philippians 3 verses 10 to 11 that I may know Christ and the, and the power of his resurrection, and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. My dear brothers and sisters, we will now have our communion. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We will now partake of the bread. Let us pray. Our awesome God, our Father, we would like to thank you for this worship service that we have. Thank you so much, God, for the gift of salvation. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. We truly appreciate, God, your redemption of all of humanity. We pray, God, that you will continuously strengthen us during these difficult times. We pray that we will be aware of your presence as you walk with us through our difficult roads. Father, we pray that you will bless us and protect us all. Thank you so much, God, for your love. There are just so many things that... We do not know right now the future is uncertain, but we take rest in the thought that we could completely trust you, God, in everything. Thank you so much for our church. Thank you that we are together this morning. 
Thank you, God, for the gift of life. Thank you that we are gathered together as one. We pray, God, that you will always be with us. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen.